Did you know that NFTs are actually part of a massive pyramid scheme spanning around the whole world? Weird, right? Well, we thought that this sounded strange too, which is why we spent the last few days looking into some of their weird and wonderful claims that people make about non-fungible tokens. And what we found was that there is a lot of misinformation floating around the web about NFTs right now. So much so that we decided to put together a video debunking eight of the most common myths around NFTs. But first, my name is Trev, and here at CoinMarketCap, we are on a mission to make crypto accessible all around the world. And that's why we love making videos for you that are easy to understand and simple to share with your friends and family. So if you want something more than just hype and to actually learn about crypto, then make sure to hit the subscribe button right now and to turn on notifications so you're not going to miss out on our new videos. And let's learn together. So NFTs or non-fungible tokens are one-of-a-kind digital items, like unique artworks with proof of ownership stored on a blockchain like Ethereum. Keep in mind that while most NFTs are stored on the Ethereum blockchain, Ethereum is by no means the only blockchain that supports NFTs. Zalika, Flow, Tezos, Solana, and Cardano, and the just renamed BNB chain are all supporting minting and trading NFTs as well. Number one, NFTs are all digital art. For now at least, NFT artworks are the NFT sales that dominate the conversation in the mainstream media mostly because of Beeple. Once Beeple's everyday NFTs sold through Christie's auction house for $69 million, the world woke up to NFT artworks. And naturally, most folks assume that because of Beeple, People's NFT is an artwork that all NFTs must be artworks. But the truth is that NFTs can digitally represent basically anything, not just artworks. For example, in-game assets like skins and weapons are increasingly being minted as NFTs and traded on the global markets. Keep in mind though that whatever the NFT represents, it isn't stored on the blockchain. It's the NFT. In the case of Ethereum, the ERC721 token that is stored on the blockchain. For instance, should we decide one day to store our identity data like passport information as NFTs on the blockchain, the passport data itself wouldn't be stored on the blockchain as an NFT. Instead, the NFT would act as a proof of your passport details and would point to wherever your passport details are stored off chain. And for the next years, most of the NFT sales you're going to read about will mostly be about digital artworks. But in the future, we could see copyright, intellectual property, or even housing deeds stored on the blockchain as NFTs. And that brings us to number two, which is is that NFTs are just a fad. Plenty of people said that the internet wouldn't catch on or else was destined to end up as a tool only to be used by criminals. In fact, a look at this article shows all of the absurd predictions made about the internet 25 years ago. They also said that nobody wanted to spend all evening staring at a box with moving pictures on it as well. Now, I don't know about you guys, but most of the people I know own at least a TV. Fuzzy. <laughs> God, the more I resist, the more intriguing they become. And now they're back this time, but this time they're saying that NFTs offer nothing more than minor technical novelty and they'll be gone or worthless in just a few years. Given the hundreds, if not thousands of possible use cases for NFTs, it's just not plausible to say that NFTs are going to disappear overnight. Also, NFTs grew into a $41 billion market in 2021 and are fast catching up to the total size of the global fine art market. It's fair to say that NFTs aren't going anywhere anytime soon. We also have to account for the rising levels of corporate interest in NFTs as well. Nike, for example, has patented a way to verify your trainer's authenticity using a bespoke NFT system called CryptoKicks. However, that's not to say that even some or let's just say all, you know, NFT digital artwork won't lose some value over the years because some of it definitely will. So we can say with 100% certainty that NFTs aren't a fad? Of course not. But are they going away anytime soon? Of course not. And number three, NFTs are a get rich quick scheme. Despite all evidence to the contrary, some people are determined to keep harping about NFTs being a get rich scheme or some new complicated cyber scheme. This idea is based on the notion that demand for NFTs will suddenly dry up and when it does, there'll be a few big winners and a lot of losers. In other words, NFTs are just one enormous rug pull. And this is an odd complaint to have about NFTs, mostly because the majority of artists who sell NFT artworks and the collectors who buy them aren't getting rich. A few certainly are, and more probably will be, but for NFTs to be one giant rug pull, the vast majority of NFT collectors would need to be getting rich, which just isn't happening. As said previously, it's certainly possible that NFTs will be worth a lot less tomorrow than they are today, but that doesn't mean they're a scam. To put it another way, think about NFTs as if they were diamonds or emeralds. If we wake up tomorrow and agree that diamonds and emeralds are worthless, 
They're worthless. People make the same complaint about gold and have been for a long time. In fact, the legendary Wall Street investor Warren Buffett is famously critical of gold, saying it doesn't do anything but sit there and look at you. Well, NFTs do a lot more than sit there and look at you. And as said previously, NFTs have thousands of real world use cases. On a related note, we've seen a few people on social media claiming that NFTs are part of a specific type of scam called a pyramid scheme. To be clear, a pyramid scheme involves recruiting members by promising to pay them if they recruit more members into the scheme. Of the various complaints people have about NFTs, this is probably the strangest, because there's no centralized company producing and selling NFTs, nor is anybody trying to conscript other people to sell NFTs on behalf of a company in exchange for a slice of revenue. So could NFTs be a part of a pyramid scheme? However, while the concept of NFTs are legit, as with any emerging technologies, there are many people out there trying to make a quick buck off you. The ease of creating a new PFP collection promising to be the next crypto punk or bored ape is exactly the reason one must do proper due diligence before buying an NFT project. And that brings us to number four, which is that NFTs are bad for the environment. This complaint worries a lot of people and is the cause of a lot of vitriol and outrage online. And to be fair, climate change is the biggest threat our species faces today, and there's simply no excuse for buying something you don't need if it's bad for the environment. That said, the narrative that each each and every NFT trade or minting is always bad for the environment is simply not true. It's important to understand that the minting and trading of NFTs doesn't necessarily use a lot of energy. That said, blockchains using proof of work consensus mechanisms like Ethereum do use a lot of energy when minting or trading NFTs. But not all blockchains use proof of work, and many other blockchains like Cardano and Tezos use proof of stake to process transactions, which use considerably less energy. Of course, Ethereum is where a lot of NFT action happens happens and is therefore the main culprit for NFT's poor reputation for harming the environment. But all this will change sometime this year. After the beacon chain emerges with the existing proof of work chain, Ethereum will use 99.95% less energy per transaction and this was previously referred to as Ethereum 2.0 but is now just being called the merge. So once Ethereum's merge happens, most of the claims about NFTs being bad for the environment will start to dry up. For now we can at least take some solace from the news that crypto mining has become much greener in the past year. In fact, the Bitcoin Mining Council estimates that between 56 and 67% of all crypto mining energy comes from sustainable sources, meaning that a higher proportion of the energy used for crypto mining comes from renewable resources when compared to the proportion of Germany or the UK's energy. And number five, NFTs are worthless and useless. So if a buyer believes that an NFT has value, just as whether a buyer believes an artwork has value, then the NFT or artwork has value. Yes, it's very subjective, but then again, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. So when most people talk about how NFTs are worthless, they really mean that one particular NFT artwork won't hold its value, which might be true. Here you have to remember that the difference between the value of the concept of NFTs and the value of an individual NFT artwork is not the same. Whether NFT digital artworks will hold their value is certainly debatable, but the market for NFTs is already so massive that saying NFTs are worthless really doesn't make much sense. As for the NFTs are useless complaint, let's just say that for the next few years, NFTs will mostly be used for creative works like art and music. Still, going forward, NFTs have thousands of possibilities and use cases in basically every industry. For example, hospitals could store and share patient medical records or identity verification as NFTs, making it easier for medical centers around the world to collaborate. Or we might be able to store proofs of our academic credentials or identity documents as NFTs as well, making moving across borders faster and easier. Entertainers could soon be selling tickets to their events as NFTs, which could also eradicate ticket scalping. In the end, even if NFTs were only used in the creative industries, NFTs still wouldn't be useless. And that brings us to number six, which is that NFTs are easily copied, which leads to art forgery and theft. Digital art had held its place in the art world for a while now, but it's always faced the right-click save as problem. In other words, it's really easy to duplicate and re-upload elsewhere. And while NFTs certainly go a long way to solving the problem of proving ownership of a digital artwork, people can still easily re-upload artworks as NFTs and pass them off as originals. So how do you know that the NFT that you already own or the one that you plan on buying is legit? For now, you need to do your homework before you hand over any money regardless of which exchange you're buying your NFTs from. The only way that you can get duped when buying an NFT from a legitimate exchange is by not bothering to check that what you're buying is actually the real deal. But to understand why you can't steal NFT art, 
part, you need to understand what a blockchain is and how it works. A blockchain is a distributed ledger on which you can store basically any information you want. But unlike other shared databases, information stored on a blockchain is immutable, meaning that it can't be changed or rewritten. So whenever an NFT artwork is minted and stored on a blockchain, an accurate and permanent record exists of when it was created and by whom. So while you can go and mint an NFT, which is seemingly identical to a popular or valuable NFT, it's child play to identify the fake one. And this is one of the main advantages of NFT artworks have over oil paintings and other classical art mediums. In fact, fake paintings and artworks are a big problem for museums and galleries, as identifying fakes is no easy task. As a matter of fact, back in 2010, The Independent reported that 20% of all paintings held in major museums are fake. So while it is much easier to duplicate a digital artwork stored as an NFT than it is to say create a perfect copy of one of Goya's paintings, it's also much easier to tell when an NFT is a copy. In the NFT art space, just like in the art world, there will always be bad actors hoping to scam any unwary or well-intentioned buyers. You really just have to be careful. And number seven, NFTs are helping criminals to launder money. Unfortunately, crypto is stuck with a shady reputation from being the currency of choice on the Silk Road, which was the dark web marketplace where you could anonymously buy basically anything like guns or drugs. Regrettably, crypto's criminal reputation has bled over into NFTs and people are claiming that criminals like tax dodgers and cartels are using NFTs to transfer stolen money across the world. But is this true? Money laundering costs the world economy between 2 and 5% of GDP every year, or between $800 billion to $2 trillion annually. While offshore banking is technically legal and there are legitimate reasons for using it, it's mainly used to dodge taxes and gain wealth through criminal activity. For obvious reasons, offshore banks don't share their records and there are very few accounts showing how and when money was laundered. However, financial leaks like Panama Papers and Paradise Papers have given us a lot of insight into how companies and individuals hide their wealth into offshore in tax havens. So how much of the trillions of dollars in laundered wealth do you think came from NFTs and crypto? Well, according to chain analysis, it's about $8.6 billion, or less than 1% of laundered money globally. The truth of the matter is that criminals and the corrupt actors have had no problem whatsoever hiding their wealth from governments and regulators long before Bitcoin even came along. And with the help from the traditional banking sector, they still don't struggle now. For instance, HSBC was fined nearly $2 billion not long ago for its part in a money laundering scandal involving Mexican and Colombian drug cartels. And HSBC is hardly the only offender. Goldman Sachs and Standard Chartered have also paid billions in fines in their parts in money laundering. So as you can see, crypto's role in helping criminal masterminds move their money around the world is pretty much none. And that brings us to number eight, which is buying an NFT means that you own the underlying asset. So this one's more of a technical misunderstanding. When you buy an NFT, you don't automatically take ownership of the underlying asset or copyright or intellectual property rights. In fact, unless otherwise agreed, ownership of the intellectual property stays with whoever made the NFT. For instance, if you bought a CryptoPunk, you don't have the right to create and sell a range of CryptoPunks. Much in the same way that buying a special edition CD or record from a band or owning an NFT of a song doesn't give you the right to sell the band's music online or use their branding to sell your own music. However, buying an NFT sometimes does include other rights as per the terms of sale, including the intellectual property rights. But this works by a case-by-case -case basis. In other words, do your own research. Hey, did you like that video? Yeah, well, make sure to check out these other videos here because if you like this video, you're probably gonna like these videos. So what are you doing? Go check out those videos and like and subscribe while you're at it. So yeah, check them out.